Proverbs Chronicles, the 16th chapter, verses 8 through 14. First Chronicles, the 16th chapter, verses 8 through 14. How many of you all know that there is none like our God? There is none like God. We give God all the praise and the honor and glory just for allowing us to be here this morning. Just for allowing us to breathe. We can take nothing for granted. First Chronicles, the 16th chapter, verses 18 through 14. And it reads, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing songs to him. Talk of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works which he has done. His wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O seed of Israel, his servant, you children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Father God in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come. God, we thank you for this, another privilege. This, another honor, Father God. This, another great opportunity just to approach your throne of grace. God, we thank you, Father God, for giving us a mind to, to represent you before the world. We thank you, Father God, for leading us to the, the house of prayer. God, we honor you today, Father God, for you are good, you are God all by yourself. Hallelujah. Lord, we say glory to your name, Father God, for you are the God who knows all, you are the God who sees all, and you are the God who is merciful. God, we thank you, Father God, for giving us another chance to approach you, the holy God. We realize that we are unholy, and you are holy, Lord. We realize that we messed up, Father God, and, and you've never made a mistake. God, we thank you, Father God, for giving us another chance just to say thank you. Lord, we thank you for keeping us in our right mind. We thank you for bringing us to this house to honor you one more time. We thank you, Father God, for blessing our lives. And now, Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. Forgive us, Lord, for falling short. Forgive us for messing up. Forgive us for missing the mark. Forgive us for sins of omission and sins of commission. We ask you, Father God, to bless us in our worship service today. Let nothing hinder us from seeing you. Nothing hinder us from hearing from you. And nothing hinders us from obeying you. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless your Holy Spirit to room and super room in this building. Bless us, Father God, that everyone who hears the word of God will turn from their evil way. Bless us to fall out with our, our faults, Lord. And bless us, Father God, to remain in you. Lord, bless this service, Father God, that others will hear you, see you, and be delivered by you, Father. And Lord, we ask you to minister to us this day. Bless us, Father God, that we will have a new thought. We will have a new mind. And we will have a new work ethic. And Lord, out of all that you do, we ask you to keep the glory. All the honor and all the praise allows to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus Christ we pray. And we thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen.
himself dies. And he paid for our sins at the cross. Amen. We thank God for the cross. The cross of Jesus. Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We can't take the cross for granted. Because Jesus suffered. And he died. For you and for me. On a skull hill called Calvary. On old Red Cross. Hallelujah to the Lord. Praise God again for another privilege. Another honor, another great opportunity to be here. Let me call your attention to the book of Ephesians, chapter 2. Two verses there. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, Sister Paul, will you reach across the aisle there to our friend there? Amen. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 17 and 18. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 17 to 18. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off, who were afar off. And to those who were near. For through him both have access by one spirit to the Father. I want to talk about peace for all. Peace for all. When we look at the text, we find a great separation. During biblical days, it was no different than we see things today. There's always a group who think they're better than everybody else. There are certain denominations who have concluded that they're the only folk going to heaven. Well, have mercy, Lord. There are other, even local church bodies who have concluded if you're not in this body, then you won't make it to heaven. But if you even just use common sense, you don't have to be deep and wonderful. You don't have to know the Lord from as if you just dropped down out of the sky. But if you were to just use common sense, is our God so limited well, that he's going to place all of his folk at one location when he's the one that scattered them? When there was trouble in Jerusalem and the disciples were on the run, the Bible teaches that the disciples carried the, the word of God from every corner of the world, yes, sir. teaching the principles of Christianity, teaching that Christ is real and that he is the only son of God and he is the only mediator for mankind. But there's always separation. Whenever you go to school, young people, you will find that African Americans congregate in this area. Latinos congregate, congregate in this area. Asians have their little spot. And then Caucasians are located in their little area. By human nature, we find ourselves in the midst of racism. We find ourselves in the midst of prejudice. In the midst of our lives, we find ourselves in the midst of discrimination. I dare say that, that our forepairs did not march for nothing Amen. in the 60s. Amen. Yes, but we find ourselves worse off in the 2000s than we really were in the 60s. Because there is still a great chasm. There is still a great separation between every living group. If it's not a religious separation, there's an employment separation. If it's not a racial separation, then it is a, a color of your skin is a separation. I just found out after I was grown that 
you can be of the same race and still be discriminated against because of the color of your skin. Yeah, that's right. I thought every race was on at least the same page. But I found out the reason why they say we will not discriminate based on your race, creed, or color. I thought they were just duplicating when they said the word race. But then they said color. I thought it was just a duplication. But my light skinned sisters and brothers sometimes had an advantage over those of us who had a darker view. I was just so, so bewildered by this. I was just so amazed that, that they would choose one over the other. And that's how they keep us separated. Even on Instagram, even on Facebook, children are grappling with who they are based on how many likes they get or how many hearts they receive. Let me tell you, young people, you are special to God regardless of what color you are, regardless of your race, regardless of your, your height, regardless of the fade of your skin, regardless if you are 60 or whether you are 411, God has blessed you to be who you are because you are special to God. Right. Yeah. But folk like to separate you based on what you believe. What you think. Mm -hmm. That is the situation in the book of Ephesians. Mm -hmm. The Apostle Paul writes at a time when there were Jews and Gentiles. You see, the Gentiles were not privileged to go certain places, and even in the worship service, they were not privileged even to go beyond the curtain. They were not privileged to go into worship with the Jews. And then there was always a curtain that separated them. Maybe it was them in the back or the others in the front or them on the side and the others on the other side. It reminds me of Mississippi where there's a bayou that runs right down through the middle of the city and then we would have to walk across the bayou to get to junior high school. What you don't understand is regardless if you live there or not, your presence is there and because your presence is there, there is no separation. In the, in the book, in the book of Ephesians, Paul writes this letter to the Gentiles to give them assurance that, that they are special to God. Too often we find ourselves with young people and senior saints that find themselves with low self-esteem because they don't believe that they are just as good as everybody else. Paul sets the stage today. The apostle Paul says to the Gentiles, you were dead in your trespasses. And he says to the Jews, you are nobody either because you were dead in your trespasses. <clears throat> when you look at the pericope between verses 1 and 10, he says that we were dead in our sins. We were just like everybody else. We find ourselves at a point in our lives where we think we have been saved long enough to declare that we are somebody. But it was just yesterday that you were sinful too. It was just yesterday that, that you found yourself in a dead situation. The Bible says that we were dead in our trespasses, meaning we couldn't get to God and God couldn't get to us. We were dead. And I trust It didn't matter where you were born. Didn't matter what your parents looked like. Didn't matter whether you were rich or poor. God has come to put us all on the same level today. Reminds me of a song. And if you if you really hold it, you may, may not like this song. But before I got saved, I used to listen to this song. And every now and then, I, I turn back the hands of time and listen to this song again. I hope you don't put me in hell about this song. But I can understand the words of the song. When Frank and Beverly May said, we are one. Well, somebody's feet start packing. We need a one. Let me just share with you. You have to come to the conclusion, regardless of how your hairstyle is, regardless of what you wear, regardless of whether you are size zero or size 28, you must come to the conclusion 
that we are one. That no one is better than anybody else. It doesn't matter what language you speak. It doesn't matter what color your skin is. We are all one. The Bible teaches in Genesis that God swooped down into the dust of the earth. He didn't even make Adam from good dirt. He made him from the dust of the earth. And all of us are children of Adam. All of us are children of the mother of life, Eve. And because Adam and Eve messed up, Brother Miles, you can't look down your nose at me because you messed up too. Paul says, he picks this thought up in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. He says, we all have sinned and we all have fallen short of God's glory. He didn't say y'all have sinned. He said we all have sinned. It says we can't point our fingers at anybody else because we were dead in our sins. Just like everybody else. In this first Berigope, he deals with the fact that regardless if you're rich or poor, regardless of, of where you are, God is rich in mercy. I want to tell you God is rich in mercy. So if you fall short, even while you're saved, God is rich in mercy. I asked the brother the other day, he said, he said, well, you know, you can get so far out there until you can lose your salvation. I said, well, tell me when you lose it. What can you do to lose it when it wasn't yours to gain it? The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 that God has given unto every man a measure of faith. Meaning that God has put in all of us the ability to think godly and the ability to believe who God is. We are able to, to be blessed through our faith. And then it says... Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The reason why we're journaling the word of God, the reason why we're listening to the Bible, the reason why we're studying the Bible, the reason why we're in Bible study and Sunday school is because the word of God strengthens our faith. Yes, Lord. Yes. And we can't even brag about our faith. Because that faith that we have, God gave it to us. Look at Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9. It says to us plainly and clearly that we are saved through grace. We are saved by grace. We are saved with grace. It is not of ourselves. Lest any man should boast. We, we are saved through grace. Lest any man should boast. In other words, you can't brag about it. Yeah. We are saved by grace. We, we are born again because of grace. We are going to heaven because of grace. It is unmerited favor. It is favor that we don't deserve. That's right. no. God just looks over the world. And before the time began, as we know it, God knows who we are and he knows where we are. Yeah. Yeah. And he says, not only are you saved by grace, it is through faith by which you are saved. It is God's faith. People talk about, I got a God-like faith. Well, all faith belongs to God. Just because you do great exports and somebody else does not do great exports doesn't mean that you have a God-like faith. That just simply means that you have the faith that God has given you and your faith has been activated. So he says, he says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, that, that you can't brag about. That's right. Can't brag about. One of the, the biggest bragging group in the world are church folk. Just let them get saved on Friday. By Sunday, they can tell you all about the Bible. Just, just allow them to, to get one Sunday school under their belt, and then they will criticize the Sunday school teacher. Just let them show up one time, and now this is the fact. The ones who criticize are the ones that's not attending. The ones who criticize are the ones that's not uh, doing the thing the way God wants them to do it. Oftentimes, oftentimes tell the brothers that sit in the cut and talk about whether the preacher was preaching the right thing or not. I said, come on up. I introduce you on Sunday. It's not what you think it is. <laughs> It's not what it looks like. It is not easy to pack the whole word of God 
and speak what is clear, what is accurate, what is determining a person's future and not be nervous about it. It's not easy. It's not easy to, to tell people what God has said and make sure you accurate with what God has said. We have to make sure we understand we can't brag about this thing. When you look at Ephesians chapter 1 through 10, it, it tells us the fact that we were cut off. And after God saved us, he created us a masterpiece. Stop looking down on yourself. If you're saved, you're a masterpiece. I think God said it again. But look, read, read the Bible. Your Bible says, once you are saved, and you are saved by grace through faith, and once you are saved, once you are born again, God has created you as a masterpiece. And since we are a masterpiece now, we do great things for God. And now God has saved us and he has seated us in heavenly places. That's the past. God has set us in heavenly places and we're already there. Look here, you at 4251 Shuramai Road, Houston, Texas, 77048. USA, you are at this location, but if you say God has seated you in heavenly places, you are already there. God has already placed you there. You are already in a place where you're not yet. My God. Well, preacher, how am I sitting in this seat? How am I standing in front of you? How am I listening to your broadcast and I'm already in heaven? Because God doesn't think the way you think. God doesn't move the way you move. The way God moves, he moves in the past, he moves in the present, and he moves in the future. You see, God was in eternity past before eternity even got here. God is in eternity present, and God will also be in eternity future. That's why when we're saved, you are justified, just as if you had never sinned. You are justified, you are set aside by God through salvation, you are now justified. And justification simply means back home they were said like this, you are just as if you had never sinned. Jesus on the cross, thank you choir, Jesus on the cross, he delivered us from sin. When we got saved, we were delivered from sin. We choose to sin. Our sin nature likes us to sin. We get caught up in sin. We know we have to walk away. The Holy Spirit is in us, and he's sending out alarm bells and sirens all the time, saying, don't go that way, don't do that, don't say that, don't act like that, and we just ignore him. The Bible says we are sitting, sitting in Heavenly places. We are seated in heavenly places. We're already there. Thank God we're already there. So every time we think about what God has already done to us, what God is doing through us, and what God is doing with us, we ought to say thank you. We ought to say, Metro Black. We, we ought to say, Lord, I just thank you for just dealing with this dirty dust. You just messed up dust. You just dust. You, you, when it comes to God, when you compare yourself to God, when you compare yourself to godliness, your best day, you are nothing more than a filthy rag before God. But this is what God does. He puts us on a pedestal and creates us as a masterpiece. We need to stop telling our children who they are not and tell them who they are. Tell, tell our children, tell our children that they are masterpieces. That they have been put together by God. Tell our children that God has blessed them. And God is looking forward to doing some great things in you. Tell our children that they need to exercise the gift that God has given them. And when you tell your children that at a young age, they grow up to know who they are. And they don't have to worry about a lot. They don't have to worry about a heart. They don't have to worry about a thumbs up. Because they are already in the presence of God once they're saved. And seated. Not only is it, are we seated in heavenly places, he says we're seated with Christ. We're seated in Christ. We're, we're right there with Jesus. We are masterpieces. We, we're somebody. When folks say, oh, everybody ain't able, you say, you sure ain't. You better get saved. <laughs> well, everybody can't do. See, they're talking about this tangible stuff. I'm talking about stuff we can't see. 
I'm talking about what God and God alone can do. The devil in hell can't stop. God has to give the devil permission just to go a step farther. And God wants you to walk in his presence. We'll move to chapter 2, verses 11 through 13. It's, Paul reminds the Gentiles that you are outsiders. Have anybody in this room been reminded that you are outsider? And check this out. When people see you as an outsider, they don't hesitate to remind you that you don't belong here. Let me tell you another thing. Even as a little boy, I grew up knowing we just using common sense. We grew up there was a white water fountain. And there was a colored water fountain. And those of us of my hue weren't allowed to drink out of the, the white water fountain. But early we had to go to the to the black water fountain. So one day as a little boy, I wanted to see where the water was coming from. <laughs> I walked the line. I saw a big line. And then it split into two lines. And all of a sudden it went up to the white water fountain, one to the black water fountain. I said, he's so crazy. The water is coming from the same place. And they want me to think that I'm less than a man because I have to drink out of the black water fountain. But the water is coming from the same place. Young folk understand that things that you get blessed with are coming from the same place. It only comes from God himself. But I didn't stop there. I noticed when the water fountain shoots out water, some water goes in the mouth and others go back to the drain. I'm laying all up on the water fountain, tracing the drain out. And I noticed something. The drain line, the return lines got back together again and they came together in the same place and tied into a same common line. I said, these people have lost their mind. I know who I am and it has nothing to do with the color of my skin. It all has to do with what I'm drinking coming in and what I'm letting go out. Even the pictures, even the pictures show big old pipelines. And we let people tell us that we are nothing. Let people tell you that because you are brown, because you are black, you don't deserve to be here. Let me tell you, that's how it was in the days of the Bible when the when the Gentiles were told by the Jews that you wouldn't. Nothing. You don't deserve to be here. Matter of fact, you can't even worship with us. But every time in these great United States of America, when a 9-11 hits, every church door is open and folk that didn't worship together before, they're crying all over each other, they're snotting all over each other, they're hugging all over each other, and they're declaring that you are my brother and you are my sister. Don't wait till 9-11 hits for us to know that we are one. says you were not a citizen. Verse 11 to 13, Paul says that Gentiles, you were not citizens. You, you were outsiders. You had no hope. And, and you were far away from God. But Paul says, now that you're saved, now that you are born again, you are citizens of heaven. Let me tell you, let me just remind you that we just feel we're passing through. God, even, even during those days when they tried to paint, and even they still trying to paint a picture now to say there's a white heaven and there's a black heaven. Let me tell you, it's the same God and it's the same white heaven. And let me share with you, those who think it's a black heaven and a white heaven, they're not going because their hearts are not turned toward the Lord. So, so Paul says to these Gentiles, now since you're saved, now, since you're born again, you are citizens. You're no longer foreigners. You're no longer illegal. You are, are no longer aliens. You are citizens. Not 
And not only are you citizen, you live in a hopeful state, not a hopeless state. All this stuff that's going on, and Brother Whitlock hit it on it in, this morning in Sunday school, you got to walk out the door and make sure you practice getting home safely. I say again, as I said so many times, brother asked his sister, hey, do I need Jesus to go to heaven? She said, brother, you need Jesus to go to Walmart. You need Jesus to pump gas. You need Jesus to walk out your door. You can't get around Jesus. You need Jesus to wake up in the morning. Do I need Jesus to go to heaven? You need Jesus. Why are you talking to me? Shootings all over the place. Everybody got to go. I mean, everybody. The three-year-old walk around, five-year-old walk around, six-year-old walk around. Everybody packed. John Wayne, I shall be real, has nothing on the state of Texas. People walk around with it exposed so they can tell you, I, I dug that. Just say one thing if you want. Just blow the horn one time if you want. I sit here as long as I want to sit here because I'm obnoxious like this. The Bible says we need Jesus. Every church, every church that's open and the doors are open need to be preaching Jesus. You need to preach Jesus and Jesus crucified. You need to preach Jesus and Jesus raising up on the third day morning. You need to preach Jesus and Jesus is the one who walks with us. He's the one who talks with us. You need to preach Jesus that if you don't make it in the morning. I mean the hypnologist was right when he said if I don't wake up in the morning, everything will be all right. You need Jesus. When your young person comes to you and asks you, what do I need? Tell me I need Jesus. And what the preacher needs, the preacher needs Jesus. Yes, sir. Because without Jesus, we are still alienated. Without Jesus, we still are no longer citizens. Without Jesus, we still are hopeless. Without Jesus, we are still outsiders. You see, we're trying to be like the world. And the world needs to try to be like us. We, 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 need, to, we need to put up a glorious presentation. For the whole world to see that the God that we serve is keeping us. Young folks, it doesn't matter how smart you are. It doesn't matter how cool you are. Doesn't matter if you dress well or not. Let me tell you, folks are losing a lot of money, wasting a lot of money trying to keep up with the fact. I know I'm dating myself, but when I was in, 501 jeans were in. 501 jeans went out. Chick jeans went in. And they were glued to the woman's body. Chick jeans went out. Wranglers were in. Wranglers went out. Let me tell you, stop worrying about the fad. Get with Jesus because the Bible says he is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. Stick with Jesus and don't worry about the fad. Right. We will converse cloth converse shoes. If they got dirty, we would take a toothbrush and clean out every crevice. Let me tell you, you don't have to have expensive stuff. You just need clean stuff. You, you, don't, you don't have to have the latest and, and what's going on. You don't have to change. You know what I said? I said, well, y'all go ahead and buy that stuff now. When it comes back around in two years, I still have my own. Because we have to understand Jesus remains the same. He says to, to these, these Gentiles that you were brought near. He said you were far away, but you were brought near by the blood of Jesus. It was Jesus' blood that has kept us in our right minds. It is Jesus' blood that has saved us and guaranteed us a spot in heaven. It's because Jesus gave his life on a skull hill called Calvary. And because he gave his life, now we look like we are justified. Now we look like we never sinned. Now we look like we are qualified. We are not qualified, but Jesus has qualified us. Jesus has imparted in us righteousness. He has imputed righteousness in us. We still messed up, didn't we? But when God looks at the blood of Jesus, 
He doesn't see our mistakes. He sees the blood of Jesus. And he says, come on up here where I am. Because the blood cleanses us and keeps us. God has this huge eraser. Somebody may be feeling bad about what you did last night. Confess your sin. First John 1 and 9 says, if you just confess your sins, God is faithful. And God is just to forgive you your sin and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You know, folk, even church folk like to remind you of who you are or who you're not or what you used to be. Every time they remind me of what I used to be, I remind them of who I am now. And if they keep, keep on talking, I will tell them, you are what I used to be. And I don't want to be that anymore because God has watched me. God has saved me. He has made me over again. The text declares that God has made both the Jew and the Gentiles anew. Frankie Bellman says, we are one. Young folks, ask your mom and dad who Frankie Bellman is and see if they move their leg just a little bit. We are. We are one. You see, I grew up when music was music. I grew up when it talks about love, peace, joy, and happiness. I grew up when they had a peace sign everywhere and they would talk about women. They would not talk about women under their clothes, but they would talk about how, how well-dressed women were. And, and they would talk about how much she loved him and how much he loved her. When I grew up, I mean, uh, Teddy Pendergrass was one of the men. When I grew up, Barry White knew how to say it. When I grew up, women knew that you loved them because what you say to them and how you carry yourself to them. Now we talking under women clothes. Now we talk about how big their, their anatomy is, but we need to tell them about Jesus and Jesus alone and how he can bless us and keep us. Look at verses 14 through 18. Christ has united the Jews and the Gentiles. Christ has torn down a petition that separate the two classes. It didn't matter if you were rich or poor. Christ came for you. Because if we had to depend on money, some of you all would get in. But I would be outside the door. Because I probably made more money now than my mom and daddy made in a whole lifetime. And most of you in this room have too. But the good thing about growing up in a Christian atmosphere, Big Mama didn't have a third grade education, but she had connection with God. And when we got in trouble, we didn't depend on our education. We ran to Big Mama's house. And when we got to Big Mama's house, we would kneel down in front of the rocking chair and she would lay her hands on us and call on the Almighty God that she knows. And let me tell you, when she got through praying, things happened. Yes, yes, Lord. Got through when she when she got through, uh, God answered her prayer. Yes, Lord. When she got through, when Big Daddy got through calling on God, when, when Big Daddy got through calling on God, he would get up and say, "Now, boy, now you gotta be a man. We need more men to show boys how to be a man than boys leaning all over mama and corrupting these girls' lives." Yes. Women these days. They, they get in her car. He drives her to work. And he comes back late to pick her up. And she better not say anything to him. After all, you, you waited, didn't you? And guess what? You're going to wait tomorrow, too. Now, we got 21st century sisters in this room. And they ain't having it. Now, sister, you say you're not having this at the church. I don't want to drive up on you and, and you being you standing on the side of the road eating crow and acting like you you really got it going on in my presence. But then when you're with it, I love you. The, 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 the woman said the other day, this boy in my DM told me I was pretty. And she dumped all of her money over there because he said it. She was pretty. Let me just tell you now, as the pastor of the New Beginning Church, 4251 Shuramai Road, Houston, Texas, 77048, USA, all y'all pretty. Don't wait to let somebody else 
tell you you're pretty because that ought not get in your head and make a mess out of you. Jesus has made us who we are. He died for us and he, he walked with us and he's still ministering to us. You are, and brother, because she gone, he you needed, you needed 50 feet. Now you need 200 feet. Now you need five miles. Don't let any woman, brother, tell you, you ain't going to make it now. You stay with Jesus. Amen. If you stay with Jesus, yeah. he will show up your critics. If you stay with Jesus, God says, I will prepare a table before you in the presence of my enemies. He said he will prepare right while my enemies are sitting there. He said he will prepare a banquet for me. So sister, brother, get your tuxedo out. You going to a banquet. Sister, get your long flowing dress and your six inch heels out. You have a banquet to attend. That joker, she wasn't no good anyway. Move on and move out. You gotta, gotta know who you are. Yes. Yes, sir. yeah, it hurts. Yes, it's pain. Mm -hmm. But you gotta move on. Yes, it's time to move forward. Yes, Jesus yes. knows what's best for you. Yes, Stay with Jesus. So the petition was read. And when this, the temple, I'm talking about the petition in the temple, the separation in the temple, God set it straight. Through Jesus. The petition of separation is no more. This petition is now gone. Some denominations, you wouldn't be able to sit with your wife in church. In the synagogue. And some of y'all look at me like, I know you play. This is a woman I got paid for some. Yeah, but you go to that service, you won't be sitting with her either. Because some are sitting on this side, some are sitting on this side, male, female, or either the women are sitting in the back or the women are sitting in the front. But Jesus has torn these traditional petitions down. He did it on Calvary when he died for you and me. Jesus has abolished, the text declares, he has abolished the law. Doesn't mean that he destroyed it. What it does mean is Jesus has reached and accomplished it for you on your behalf. Jesus, who had no sin, has been a blessing to you because he did not be seduced by Satan and give in to Satan. He did not trip up. He did not submit to the temptation. But Jesus, he lived the whole law, and then he set the record straight by abolishing the law. And after he abolished, he said, it is finished. The word... In the Greek is tetelestai. Jesus says on the cross, tetelestai. He says it is finished. He has set things right. He has accomplished what he has come here to do. This word peace means to set at one again. The text says in verses 17 and 18 that Jesus is preaching and Jesus is saying that you are set at one again. He came and he preached peace to you who were far off. Those of you who are far off. Let me tell you, when you were in your sin, you were far off. Let me, I, I can relate to it. I don't know about you. When I was in sin, I wasted a lot of money going a lot of places I shouldn't have been. Any other witnesses in the house? I remember driving to Renova, Mississippi, some 60-some miles from home. Spending money and listening to the radio. And the guy at the cotton club in the backwoods of Mississippi, at the cotton club in Renova, Mississippi, he would be on the radio. He said, Five little, seven little cuties just walked in the door. I mean, we were flowing it just to get to the cotton club. We got there, we looking at a bunch of hard legs sitting there looking at each other. What a waste of money. What what a waste of time. We could have been reading the Bible. We could have been studying for, for the exam coming up on Friday. We could have been picking beans or something. We could have been doing something constructive. The Bible says that Jesus has reached that level where man could reach. You see, the law was a taskmaster. The law was a school principal. And the, the, the taskmaster just held them in a straight and narrow. They couldn't keep it. That's why some of them died. Mm -hmm. 
Ananias and Sapphira, even though they're in the New Testament, they got together at home and they decided we're going to sell this land and we're going to take some to the church. Ananias and Sapphira shows up. One of them dies, then the other one dies. The Bible, the Bible says the Holy Spirit wiped them out. Boy, if the Holy Spirit was wiping people out for a lack of tithe and offering today, you think you got some seats in here. If the Holy Spirit was wiping people out because they lied, I wouldn't be here, would you be here? If the Holy Spirit was taking us out at the first sin, you know when others are, he touched, the, he touched the, the ark. He was just trying to be helpful. He had good intentions, but when he touched the ark, he died. Because he didn't address things the way God said, line by line. Now we in the middle of grace, and God takes his eraser because of Jesus, erases our sins, and we can start over again once we confess our sins. That's awesome to me. That's why I wake up in the morning before I get out of bed, I'm saying, Lord, I thank you. Even though my bones are cracking, Lord, I thank you. Even though I can think just one more day and I can't think like I used to think, Lord, I thank you because I know if anybody can do it, God, you can do it. There are some folks that started off with us. We're just in the fifth month now. There's some folk that started off with us that's not here. You ought to raise your voice. You ought to shake your hand. You ought to clap your feet and say, Lord, I thank you for one more chance. One more day. Because Jesus has sent us at peace. Sent us at one, one more time. And he did it on Calvary. The Bible says he died on Calvary. He died until the elements of the earth began to respond. Jesus died until it became midnight at midday. It got black dark. Jesus died until the earth began to reel and rock like a drunken man. Jesus died until the earth took on an epileptic fit and began to shake and, and get volatile. Jesus died until the veil of the temple was rent. And this time it was rent from top to bottom. The veil that the priest used to go behind and, and plead the case for the people. We don't have to wait on the preacher to pray anymore. Now we can go boldly before the throne of grace for ourselves. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Sometimes the preacher is not available. Sometimes the phone won't connect. But now i got a direct connection with God. I can call on him because Jesus died on Calvary. The veil of the temple was ripped from top to bottom. Jesus died until the centurion soldier said, Surely this must be the Son of God. Jesus stopped dying enough to save one man. Jesus stopped dying long enough to address the accusers uh, uh, by the other man. Jesus died on Calvary. They took him off the cross. Laid him in a borrowed tomb. It was a borrowed tomb because he didn't need it too long. It was, it was a borrowed tomb because early that third day morning, he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. He got up while it was yet night before the dew could cover the ground. He got up with all power. Before Pilate could change the God, he got up with all power. Before the women could anoint his body, he got up with all power. Before John and Peter were getting involved in a foot race, he got up with all power. He got up with all power. Save it for you and for me. If you want to go to heaven, you need Jesus. Same Jesus that died on Calvary. Same Jesus they laid in a bar or two. Same Jesus that got up early that third day. You need him to get to heaven. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus. And you got to come just like you are. I had to come, and I came the way the songwriter said. I was weary, wounded, 
and sad. But I found in Jesus a resting place. And he has made me glad. Thank God for Jesus who died for me. Who gave his life for me. Who rose for me. Thank God for Jesus. You can have that same Jesus today. The same Jesus that can qualify you for heaven. If you have not reached him. If you have not reached out to him. You have not been a part of his service. You can get to know him right now. The door is open. Invitation is extended. When you come to Jesus. Let him in today. He will turn. Turn your life around. If you, if you just, just let it in. Let it in today, let it in today. You change. Let it in, let it in today. He'll give you a brand, brand new start. Let it in today. Turn your life, turn your life around. All these things, yeah. If you just let it in. If you haven't received Jesus Christ, do you just repeat after me and invite him into your life? Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Come into my life and make me a new person. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe if you pray this prayer, you are born again. You're on your way to heaven. There's no separation in heaven. He'll change your heart. Let him in today. He'll give you a brand new star. Let him in today. Yes, Lord. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. If you want to give electronically, you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Our zero account is lifting God Jesus at Yahoo.com. If you want to mail in your gift, you can do so by mailing it to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Father God, we thank you for this privilege of giving. We thank you for the opportunity to give unto you. We pray, Father God, for every giver, and we pray for every gift. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to ask this side to stand. Follow first and questions on the ridge in front. Bring forth the Lord's tithes off in their sacrificial gifts. Stand, follow first impressions on the rear to the front, bring forth the Lord's tithes on the exact place of gifts.
we thank you for these gifts in Jesus' name. Amen. Mother's Day, on next Sunday, May 14th, we will celebrate Mother's Day. Invite your mothers and get your Mother's Day photo taken. May birthday celebration. Please join the May birthday members as they celebrate their birthdays Sunday, May 28th, immediately after service. Everyone is invited to attend. Friday night music classes. Friday night music classes has begun. Keyboard, xylophone, handbells, African drumming, steel drums, etc., are taught at NBC on two to three Fridays a month from five o'clock to eight o'clock p.m. for students ages six and up. Please help spread the word and see Sister Carolyn Davis for more information. Bible listening and journaling. We are listening and journaling through the Bible for 2023. Don't forget to listen every day. Please remember those on our prayer list. Johnny Woods, Vivian Eslaha, Al Brinson, Nicole Davidson family, Solance Miller, Andrew Rodriguez, Denise Porter, Raymond Alfred Jr., Billy Banks, Kevin and Katrina Whitlock, Beverly Wallace, Omar Gavin, Ed Brennan family, Joe and Marlene Stavent, Jacqueline Torres, Dorothy Sellers, families recovering from natural disasters, laborers for the harvest, protection of schools, and world peace. Thank you. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for those who are listed on our list. We pray that you bless, Father God. Heal and touch. We pray, Father God, that you continue to encourage, strengthen faith. And Lord, we ask you to continue to walk with them. Bless our senior saints as they move and navigate through the dangerous waters of elderly hood. We pray, Father God, that you lift their heads. We pray that you strengthen them. We pray that you heal them. Bless our youth and our young people. Bless them to know Jesus in a very real way. We pray, Father God, that you continue to mold their lives and they will grow to be great citizens of this world and citizens of heaven. Lord, we thank you and we bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, as our guest to stand, if you're visiting with us today, will you please stand? Just say hello to us, tell us who you are, and who invited you, or, or did the Lord just meet you? Amen. Thank you so much for coming. We'll begin with this young lady here. Amen. Thank you so much for coming. The young man back there. Alright, my name is Daryl and uh. Fiance, we just moved over here. Amen. And, uh, I'm originally from New Peace for Rest, Baptist Church. But you know, I have been in church a couple weeks and I had to come somewhere else. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Davis. We're so glad that you came to visit with us. Will you please give them business cards so they can fill it out? I can call them and talk to them about their experience here today. Amen. Amen. Thank you again for visiting with us. We have, we have the, the book available to you. Uh, we want you to get one and then uh, make sure you get a couple for gifts to give somebody. Thank you so much for supporting our efforts, sharing the gospel. It is also an uh, evangelistic tool that we can teach and we will be teaching at other churches. Amen. So again, thank you if you have contributed and we're looking forward to you uh, receiving others so you can give away as gifts. Amen. Amen. And just names to come and recognize those who've been participating in the final listening. All right. We have certificates that we need to pass out uh, for Bible listening. We completed the first quarter. And we also have uh, another certificate that we have to pass out. 
<laughs> Are y'all just glad to be here today? Amen. We're just so thankful. Well, sis, if, let me just tell my testimony because you know what? I have been thinking about this. I have to always remember May the 6th, 2020. May the 6th, 2020, which was yesterday. I thought about it yesterday. Is when I was rolled, taken to the hospital, and dropped off for surgery. That was when the country had shut down. And I didn't know how I was going to make it through. But guess what? God brought me through. And I just thank and praise. Y'all just don't know. I thank and praise God every day for just allowing me to still be here. Amen. I was telling the boys and girls this morning that we have hope. We have that hope. And hope is when you um, you look forward to something and you and you just believe that something is going to happen. But there were some times when I didn't even know if I was going to be here. But God, through Jesus, I had that hope, and I'm just so, I'm just thankful. So I just thank God for just allowing me to just to still be here to come and do what Pastor Davis is asking me to do. <laughs> All right. This is a certificate of completion. This award is awarded, awarded to Ann Paul for completion of the first quarter of business and journaling through the Bible. So what up, Sister Paul? This is a milestone. I still got to follow. I look at my I look at my certificate every day. <laughs> we also have another certificate of completion. This award is presented to our sister Van Irvin. Come on down. That's the milestone for completing the first uh, quarter. All right. We have one more to give out, but we'll give that out the next time. So thank you all so much. Just turn our hearts and our minds towards communion. Jesus died, and before he died, he met with his disciples, and he said, as often as you do this, show forth my death and my suffering until I come again. The Apostle Paul urges us in the book of Corinthians that we would not drink unworthily, unworthily, or unworthily. So what we're doing today is making sure that we uh, confess our sins to God, making sure that we do not hold grudges against anybody else, making sure our hearts are turned toward God, that our hearts are pure, and that God can bless us. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we come now blessing your name and thanking you for who you are, for what you've done. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for his death on the cross. We thank you for his blood that cleanses us. And Lord, we ask you to bless us to drink. Bless us to drink and eat that you will receive the glory. Lord, we thank you for Jesus and his death and his resurrection. We thank you for the blood that flowed from his side that now covers our sins. We thank you, Father God, that we can come boldly with confidence before you. And we praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. 